Hello YouTube, Brian here from Giant Travels by Van. Today I'll talk about a new way to build a seating and bedding platform in your van. Welcome back to Giant Travels by Van. When I was designing my van, I had the idea to use some cargo tie-down hardware to make my seating and bedding platform adjustable. Let's get started and I'll show you how I build it. When I was originally researching my van build, one of the limitations I saw a lot of others dealing with in these small uh, vans like the Ram Promaster City was accepting that they would build a bed platform and not be able to sit up in it. And I wanted to be able to sit up in it. And also at six foot two inches tall, uh, that would be more of a challenge for me to try and accomplish than most people. My original inspiration came from an IKEA Pong chair as far as the seating configuration because I liked how it was raked back and it was really comfortable to sit in for an extended period of time. So the goal was to try and find a way that I could make this work in the van. The solution came to me when I discovered the cargo system from US Cargo which I could use to change the angle of the platform from bedding to seating back and forth easily. They sell a system called an L-Track and various fittings that mount in it and adjust to various positions. And one of them will allow you to attach a bolt to it. So I realized this would allow me to fasten a hinge to this system and make the uh, platform move up and down between being level for sleeping or in this Adirondack chair type configuration where the back is lowered down low enough that my seat, uh, head would clear the ceiling. My first task was figuring out where to mount these on the wall. I had decided that two of them would hold the weight and so once I figured out the angle of approach from the chair where it would strike the wall, which you can see here is about a 30 degree angle as best I could measure it, then that allowed me to figure out where I'd need to mount these so at the lowest position I could achieve that height at the back for the platform and then be able to raise it up to a level position. Since the brackets are 12 inches long they give you quite a bit of freedom uh, range of movement so for me I wound up mounting these about 7 inches off the floor and I judged that would give me both a low enough position and a high enough position to make the platform uh, level for sleeping. Both of these were mounted with rev nuts to the wall and at the forward position here, uh, not shown in the photograph, but I did wind up ending, adding a piece of steel plate to the lower area since there were so many holes in there uh, that were cut out in the, the van wall to strengthen that area for another mounting bolt at the bottom and so that the weight of it wouldn't compress into the wall. For the second bracket at the rear of the van, it's mounted very near the pillar and one of the critical things that you have to watch in this is making sure that both of them are mounted uh, perfectly vertical. If they're angled at all, either in or out towards the top or bottom, then when you try and adjust and slide them up, the distance between the two brackets will be changing and it'll bind. So you won't be able to slide the adjustable post uh, that holds the hinges which supports the platform. Uh, it won't slide easily up and down. So you have to take care and mount these uh, perfectly parallel to each other. Here's a close-up of the hinge I used. Obviously this is a temporary bolt. I need a shorter bolt here. And I also uh, rounded off those square corners uh, that are sticking up so that someone wouldn't cut themselves on that. Here's the piece of plywood that I cut out for the platform uh, from 3 quarter inch plywood. It's mounted to the hinges and you will need to cut some relief so that it can lower down and clear around the wheel well at the back. It's about 55 inches long and 29 inches wide. And I'm supporting at the front with just a temporary piece of plywood so that I could finalize the angle that I wanted for seating uh, before I would cut the supports to the exact length that I needed. For the rest of the length, at the front of the vehicle, which would be behind the passenger seat. I wanted to create the support such that it was removable. And then also underneath this area, I'd be placing my refrigerator. So I wound up cutting the piece that would fit in here. 
and this would be removable. It was lightweight by drilling some extra holes in it. And as you can see here, the front supports are hingeable so that when you remove it, those will fold up flat. This would be supported by the main platform by putting a piece of plywood strip below the main plywood section and this would allow that short section to just rest on it. Here I have it actually sitting on top of the platform just for the purposes of drilling the holes. So I drilled the two holes to locate it where I wanted it in relation to the large platform and just have a couple of bolts sitting through those holes temporarily to hold it in place. And then I drilled the holes uh, for the removable platform where bolts would just go down through it temporarily. The plan was to be able to remove this both for access to get into the refrigerator and also this is going to serve as the backrest when it's in the seating position. The leg supports at the front of the platform have to be able to articulate since when you raise and lower the platform you'll actually be moving that area forward or back a little bit. So by arranging the hinges this way uh, the platform will be able to move slightly backward as it lowers down and the hinges will allow that freedom of movement in the support area. I wound up using three supports which felt like it was plenty strong uh, after it was finished. So here again is the front piece that mounts over the refrigerator and supports my feet when sleeping. It was cut lengthwise to just fit snugly up against the passenger seat when the passenger seat would be at its most rearward and reclined position that I ever anticipated using while driving the vehicle. Uh, it's removed and placed up here and it has tabs uh, you'll see at the bottom and my plan is to cut some holes in the main platform so that this will just simply drop into those holes, lock it in place and give me the angle that I want for the backrest. To test it and to make sure the angle was what I wanted and to lock it in place before marking these holes, I used a scrap piece of plywood behind it which held it out uh, at the angle that I wanted. I then marked the holes a little oversized so that these tabs would easily slide down in them and then I could cut them out with the jigsaw after drilling a, a hole to get access with the jigsaw. Here's the backrest in that position down, down in the holes. I also cut two other holes which would give me the option of either having the backrest shifted towards the rear of the vehicle as you see here or the others would allow me to move it to a more frontward position so that I could sit either place in it at my choosing. So here's the completed platform and you can see now that the wall has been skinned uh, and that there are cutouts for access to the L-Track to be able to adjust this up and down. I will mention that it is a bit fiddly. You will have a bit of a learning curve perhaps to learn how to adjust this. You have to rigidly hold the mounting piece against the track as you adjust it up and down because it easily wants to come out of the track. Uh, but with a little practice, you'll find that you can adjust this between the high and low position uh, in a couple of minutes. You do end up needing to adjust one uh, a couple of notches and then adjust the other one because you won't be able to take it at an angle very much because once the front uh, support brackets are mounted, they won't allow the platform to tilt uh, extremely. So it means that you have to go back and forth between the two brackets to raise and lower it a couple of times. But I've gotten where I can adjust it in a couple of minutes from one position to the other. The other thing you'll see here is that I haven't mounted the, the front supports. Uh, they are sitting on a piece of the laminate flooring and after I've installed uh, the laminate flooring completely then they will get bolted down to it to fix them in place. Uh, but I did put a piece of the laminate in here since that has to be figured into their length to give me the height that I need. You can also see that on the wall I have a light switch. This was intended to light a, a, a night light in that area. So if I wake up I have a switch right by me that I can flip on. Uh, and the plan was to use a red LED so it doesn't um, harm your night vision and you can see at night to do something inside the van. Here's a shot of the front section and if you look you can see there's four bolts that are holding the piece of plywood that I cut as a narrow strip for support and it's mounted underneath the main platform and then there's two bolts in the short 
refrigerator section that just go down into holes to locate it and keep it from shifting around. And then of course there's the two legs at the very front of it that are right behind the passenger seat that provide support at that end of it. Here's just some shots showing the close-up of the L-Track system in its completed form uh, with access here so you can reach in, pull this pin, and let it slide down or up, adjust it to the height you want. Uh, this would also offer the benefit that if you had to park your van on a slight slope, uh, you could actually adjust the bed down somewhat to provide a level uh, sleeping surface. So that's another application for this system. All in all, I was very happy with the way it came out. The 29-inch width I felt was about the right width to have for sleeping on, especially since I want to be able to sleep a second person on the floor uh, in the open area, which is why the cabinets were designed to be floating uh, to allow access for the legs. The foot of the bed platform being a bit narrower over the refrigerator also gives a little more elbow room for the person sleeping on the floor since their head would be right behind the driver's seat. Since starting my van build, I've seen some others use the L-Track system for mounting cabinets within their van and allowing them to take them out or make them adjustable. And I think there's probably other applications that people could come with, with in uh, van conversions using this system. But I was very pleased with the way this wound up uh, making a flexible platform that in such a small van, even someone as tall as I am at 6'2", can have a seating uh, configuration that's comfortable as well as quickly adjust into a, a, a sleeping configuration. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something if you also want to create a platform that converts easily from bedding to sleeping. Stay tuned. In my next episode, I'll show how I designed a custom roof rack, installed my vent, and also my solar panel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. See you soon. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something if you want to. Oh. Stay tuned. In my next episode, I'll be covering my roof rack, vent, and solar panel mount. Roof rack, roof rack, vent, and solar panel mount. Okay.